everyone how all are you i hope you all will be fit and fine and doing great in your life so i thought i have to make a video on the things which i'm studying right now that if this video will help you also and as well as mine because i am also studying these things on the regular basis and i just these things get forget uh, get removed from my mind if i do not remember or repeat these things with the time like uh, about a week about a month if i do not revise these things these thing will get removed from my mind like i was i had read these things in the childhood <laughs> this happens with me so i thought that we have to i have to make some video uh, whenever i got the time i will watch the video again and it will help me a lot so let's just start i thought to start it from the medieval india so you all know that medieval india what is medieval india so in the beginning medieval india just start from the 7th century and it goes on the uh, 1707 it was about the death of aurangzeb because we all know that uh, the death of aurangzeb is about to the end of mughal emperor or the mughal period and the beginning of the british era so that's why we call that the medieval india and in the medieval india we would learn about many things like first of all we would learn about the foundation or the emergence of the muslim religion or how muslims invade in the country and how do get they get settled in the india and after that we would also learn about some invasions like turkish invasions mongol invasions and how would they get stable in the india and after that we yeah we would also learn about some Uh, some regions or the kingdoms which get to establish in our country in a very small small region like for example kanauj in uttar pradesh was a different kingdom and there uh, and somehow there were uh, uh, what we can say in bihar there were three or four kingdoms there and now nowadays it's only one that is bihar so we would learn about these things and yeah we would also learn about some marathas and uh, and some battles as well so let's just study i have write something for you that will help you to learn the medieval india i just start from the board only so what i have written here's medieval india which i have told you that it's get start from 7th century or uh, 7th bc it's not bc it's from ad i think you all would know that what is bc and ad let me tell you what is bc bc and ad like here here is zero and why we consider it as zero because here is the birth of jesus christ so before the birth of jesus christ we write bc and the bc date always come opposite like uh, in the counting we goes like this 512 511 512 but what happens in the case of bc we goes opposite like we would start not like this we would start from 512 then 511 then 512 like this okay i hope you all get it and uh, yeah what happens in ad it generally goes the same with the counting like if we have five uh, for example if we would take here a uh, fourth century then it will come a uh, fifth uh, fifth century Then it will come sixth century like this. Okay, so I hope you all will get this better. And let me just remove here uh, these from here because I have to explain many more things ahead. So I have written here Allah. So uh, we would first discuss about the Muslim religion and about the founder who found the Muslim religion and when was the Muslim religion uh, was founded. It was not Muslim religion and Muslim religion purely called Islam. Okay, so we would just know about the establishment and the founding session, founding year, and then we will discuss about some things. So I think you all would know that Muslim or Islam is a religion where monotheist is very much famous because in Muslims there are only one God and there is no picture at all because they say that we cannot even imagine the Allah. Allah is a super power. Allah doesn't have any face. Allah doesn't have any idol. so we cannot imagine the idol or the face of the allah because he is powerful no one is powerful than the allah this is the wording of islamist so let's just see where from uh, where from the word where the word allah come from it came from arbi it's a arbian word and khuda it came from persian 
and the yeah foundation of islam i have told you that foundation of islam generally starts from 7th century and where it is founded do you know where it is founded so basically islam religion has get initiated by a person who was prophet muhammad sahab prophet muhammad sahab so his full name was hazrat muhammad sahab so where did he get born he get born he uh, at the makkah in 570 ad and uh, yeah his father was abdullah and his mother was amina here i have written his mother was amina and uh, after some time when they get their first child there was the hazrat muhammad sahab shah sahab is sahab okay so what happens generally when he get younger or the older one uh, he went into a cave that is called hema hema cave in 610 bd ad where he got the enlightenment enlightened and after that what happens the people who were in the makkah they do not some of them do not like the religion of the muhammad sahab so what they did they just said to muhammad sahab to go uh, outside the country and because they do not like him so what muhammad sahab did he went into the madina and where the Mad- makkah and the madina both both cities are they are all in south arabia so basically i think uh, now you all would know from where the islam religion get initiated or get developed so it was from the city of makka which was in which is in saudi arabia and it get spread up to the madina at the time of the muhammad sahab because here what he did he just give the sermons or he just preached the his his islam religion towards the whole country and he became he became the ideal but we can say that idol of the islam religion everyone follow now follows the uh, hazrat muhammad sahab and he is considered as the first prophet of the allah on the on the earth because what happens in muslims uh, it's we call prophet khalifa rasul nabi these are all the synonyms of prophet because what are prophet let me tell you prophet are in islam they said that prophet are those the person who what he does he is the person who pursue the ideals or the preaching or the sermons of the allah to the rest of the world that is called khalifa rasul nabi and here who was the first prophet he was the hazrat muhammad sahab so now we we learned about this now let's just uh, go ahead and i have written something here look after what is look after in english look after means dekhbhal karna so who look after uh, the hazrat muhammad sahab because after some time the parents of hazrat muhammad sahab get died and after that there was no one who took care of muhammad sahab but there was only one person who was uh, I think who was his grandfather who took care of Muhammad Sahab and his name was the Abu Talib who took care of the Muhammad Sahab and yeah the they everything just gone on this way and yeah uh, now they just move yeah, ahead towards the five uh, five pillars of the Islam religion that that are kalma namaz hajj zakat and ramzan now there is kalma there is a line which is uh, read by everyone on the daily basis in the mosque i have i have heard many a time that in my life and yeah there is namaz i, I hope you all would know about that what is namaz namaz is uh, in normal days namaz is read uh, about five times in the morning in the noon in the other and the afternoon then in the evening and in the night this is the five times of the namaz and yeah the third one is hajj hajj is like a pilgrimage uh, which is which lies in south south uh, arabia southern america uh, south arabia because here the Mus- uh, the muslim 
who are basically the Muslim, they just go to the they just go for the Hajj in the Makkah and Medina. First they go on the Makkah and after then they go to the Medina because uh, there was the main point of the Prophet Muhammad Sahib who wherever they belong to the, that place. That's why all Muslims considered them as religious. And the fourth one is Jakarta. Uh, the Jakarta is the is that uh, in the whole year if a Mus- if a muslim is spending 140th part of his salary to the person who is needy that is called zakat and without knowing anyone he or she can just uh, give or to share them that salary this can be called zakat and ramzan ramzan is a particular month where the Mus- uh, the muslim keep fast that is called roza and uh, yeah now let's just hold ahead and I would tell you ahead of these things. So I think uh, you all are getting this very clearly. I just move ahead. Uh, the first disciple. First disciple of Prophet. First disciple of Prophet Muhammad Sahib, uh, that was the Khadiya. Khadiya was his wife. Who was Khadiya? Khadiya was the his wife. So he, she became the first disciple of uh, Prophet Muhammad Sahib. And in 610, he got the indictment. And yeah, in 630, he died. Okay, in 630 he died. Then what happens? There was, uh, there was uh, his, what can we call that? His son-in-law. That was Ali. So everyone liked the Ali because Ali was the Ali was considered as the successor of of Prophet Muhammad Sahab. But what happened? There was the another discipline disciple who was Abu Bakr now there came a twist because Abu Bakr who was a disciple of the Prophet Muhammad Sahib, he became the he became the Prophet so he became the Prophet now what happened there was a but uh, there was a boundary line between the Ali and the Abu Bakr because everyone everyone liked the Ali. He was the real successor of the of the Prophet Muhammad. But uh, by default, Abu Bakr became the Prophet, and this created a condition of breaking between of uh, breaking between the Islamist religion. So here, from here, this come from Ali side. This is called Shia, and from Abu Bakr side, these are called Sunni. Then what happens? The Abu Bakr he made Medina Abu Bakr made Medina his capital and Abu Bakr basically belonged to Umayyad dynasty. What happened? Ali Ali became prophet by default by the people by the people of Madi because everyone like everyone believed that Ali was the real successor of the prophet Muhammad Sahab but Abu Bakr became the Prophet, uh, prophet, so he uh, he became the uh, prophet of the prophet by default. But he, what he did, he moved his capital He moved his capital to Damascus. And now, where is Damascus? You have to tell me. Okay, from here I have told you that from here the Ali became the Sunni. Ali became the Shia. Sorry, Ali became the Shia. 
and the and the successor of Abu Bakr became the Sunni. And from now onwards, uh, it becomes the greater conflict part between the Muslim, that is Shia and Sunni. Now. Now the question is, who brought Muslim religion into India? So there were the Arab, Arab Arabians who brought. Uh, there were some Arabians who brought Muslim religion, Muslim religion into the India, and uh, they first came on the Coromandel coast, uh, coast, which was in the Kerala, and it's uh, all right. There is uh, now that is Coromandel coast is also present in Kerala nowadays. So there the Muslims who came, they were called Mopla, and there was the first mosque there, which was constructed in the Kerala as well. So uh, the first. It was the first Muslim people who were living in the India, which was in the southern part of the India, is which is in Kerala. And what they did, they did just the marriage with the Indian people, and from there they uh, they get succeed, and their children get to know about the, by the Mopla Muslim. And now let's just move ahead. We have some more things. Uh, my question is, my second question is. Uh, Arabian invasion in North India. Arabian invasion in North India. So what happened? Let me first tell you what happened uh, when the Arabian invade in the North India. It was the. Uh, it was the. Let me tell you the story of the Muhammad bin Qasim. And Al Hajjaj. Who was the ruler of Persia that time? Persia is Iran. Hmm. So what happened? So I have told you that in South in South India how Arabian came in the India and they get settled there. But in North India it was around in the 711 or 712 AD. Muslim uh, invade into the India because uh, it was the all this all knowledge uh, would know by a book that is Chachnama that is Chachnama which is written by an unknown writer which is written by an unknown writer and it give the uh, it give the description of of Muhammad bin Qasim on Sindh area. So what happened? There was a uh, on the Sindh region of the India that time. There was a king whose name was Dahir, and who ruled there. And in the Persia, there was a king who was whose name was there was a Khal Khalifa that was, and he was ruling on the Persia. So what happened? There were uh, you all know that uh, in the past days, what happens? They uh, they just do the trade by the by the sheep. By the ships uh, on the or the by the naval way, so there was the two or three ships of uh, Al Hajjaj. They who were just passing through the Indian Indian coast, and there was the Gujarat coast there. So what happened? The people of India they just went into the ship of the Al Hajjaj and they robbed the things from the ship. And when the ship went to the Al Hajjaj in the Persia. Al Hajjaj became very angry, and he get to know that it was the, it was done by the people of India who live in the, in the kingdom of Dahir, because that time the Gujarat or the Sindh area region was in the control of the Dahir. So what happened? Uh, Al Hajjaj normally go uh, went ma uh, give message to the Dahir that your people did these things to me. You just have to compensate all the things. Uh, either I will may I will do. The invasion at your place. So Dahir did not listen what Al Hajjaj said. Uh, said, and th this was the result of the uh, of the Dahir's. Uh, un, what we can say that Dahir's 
uh, and non noticing towards the words of the al hajjaj they came muhammad bin qasim came from the persia and he invaded the sindh region and uh, he uh, what did it they killed the dahir and uh, there was the and uh, they robbed all the things and uh, yeah they compensate their th- their what happened loss in the robbery of the ship and what happened they there was two there were two daughter of the dahir there was uh, two uh, uh, they were very beautiful and uh, dahir uh, muhammad bin qasim was the commander of his uh, of his army so uh, muhammad bin qasim uh, what muhammad bin qasim did he just sent both of the girl to uh, to the persia because he knew muhammad bin qasim knew that al hajjaj would become happy if they would see the such beautiful girls and what happened this case becomes opposite to the uh, muhammad bin qasim what happened he uh, they the both girl very were very intelligent they said the muhammad, muhammad bin qasim already did miss happening with the with both of them so muhammad uh, al hajjaj get angry over the muhammad bin qasim he just call the muhammad bin muhammad bin qasim again into his kingdom and he hanged the muhammad bin qasim on the at the rope at the rope so uh, but generally in the real what happened there was no any case with the miss happening with both of the girl but they were very intelligent and that's how they were able to protect themselves from the al hajjaj and the muhammad bin qasim from both so this was the history of the muhammad bin qasim and the ruler of the sin so let us move ahead we have already discussed about the arabian invasion in the country and the preaching of the muslim now let us in india what you can say that now let us just count the significance or the things with uh, which arabian which arabian let into the india with themselves because if we go somewhere there are many things which we give to other country like our tradition which is very much different or significant in their own things if we go if we would go to the another place or in our culture our tradition clothes would go with us and this things will go into the mind of foreigners and they would also try to do the same things we say that if we go for marriage we would say that indo western clothes now this is the composition of both things indo as uh, which is which belongs to india and western which belongs to europe and all so this is the combination of both things when we combine both the clothes and this is the somehow the uh, we can say the mixture of the clothing or the culture now we will discuss about the things which were brought by the arabians into the india things brought by arabians into india okay so these are the first what the camels who were brought by the arabians into the india and second one is the cultivation or harvesting of of dates khajur third one uh yeah yeah there were introduction of horses uh good quality of horses <laughs> and mohammad bin qasim also issued gold coins translation translation of charak which is india's very most famous book and the and the panchatantra written by vishnu sharma charak was written by whom panchatantra 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 was written by vishnu sharma and charak was written by whom you have to tell me charak sahita 
and here arabians arabians also get the word monsoon in the uh, in the book of uh, matla no kitabul hind and yeah uh, they also produce the book of atlas what is atlas the book of maps yeah kitab ul hind in about regarding this i will tell you the right thing about this right, right writer who wrote the kitab ul hind this was all about the thing there were some new things yeah uh, mohammed bin qasim he used to jazia it was the text on non muslim and non muslim were also called as zimmi at the time of mohammed bin qasim this was all about the arabian invasion and uh, all about the mohammed bin qasim and about the al hajjaj and about the uh, the in de- development or the foundation of the muslim religion so i hope you all get it very much and i hope you will like this session and thank you so much for watching the video